A portal to a new world, an underworld, highly regarded for thousands of years by the Mayan people and cultures even before them as a source of life and fresh water. A place where gods would visit, a spiritual place with cathedral-like caves linked by waterways like veins underneath the surface of Mexico. Fearless cave divers and Tulum locals Dave and Nadia have been exploring the cenotes for the last 20 years, creating maps and helping the local community have more insight into the sheer scale of the underground rivers and the secrets that they hold laying beneath their feet. So we're going to monkey dust today? Yes. All right, should we get our gear on? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Let's go diving. Why did you move here in the first place? I met Dave in Australia. After a couple of years, I managed to convince him to come to this side of the world. So I'd been to Mexico and I came to Tulum. I loved it. I just slept on the beach and there was, there was nothing in Tulum and it just felt, it was awesome. I loved it. We like realized the whole jungle full of like holes to explore. And we immediately were just like, I just got to stay here. Yeah. We just wanted to see the cenotes. We're deep in the Mayan jungle. We are going into the caves. Mishba, queda siempre joven. Ya vamos a nadar. Qué bueno verte. Do you think all this cool adventure stuff is keeping you young? Not that you're old, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like sure. doing stuff like this, we need to do more often just to keep the kid in yeah, us, you know, yeah, alive. Yeah. I mean, I've got friends who are like 60, 70, and they still cave dive, and you're like, ah, oh, compare them to other people who don't. Yeah. You're like, you can see that yeah. it gives you, like... If my parents Lindslust. were doing this every day, I think they'd be... They have a zest for life more than they have now. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, took now I look like a professional. Millions of years ago, the Yucatan and the surrounding areas would have been a gigantic reef until the sea level dropped, leaving behind these caves, sinkholes and a vast network of underground river systems. I just found chilies in my pocket, which is part of being in Mexico, it's just what happens. Good. About to go in the cenote, look at that. These fish are eating me. The water was crisp, refreshing, and crystal clear. It was teeming with an abundance of life. Limestone stalagmite spears and deep tree roots were all around us. It was totally pitch black inside the caves, and so was the perfect home for thousands of bats clinging to the cave ceilings. Dave and Nadia over the years have discovered some ancient artifacts deep inside these caves which shed more light on the history of these magnificent places. Probably the best thing we've ever found. When I found it, I started to hyperventilate. Is, is, is that what I think it is? <laughs> yeah, see, there's his teeth. See the what? teeth. And then it, at the back of the skull has been smashed. This is probably about 16,000 years old, probably. Something like that. So this is pre, that's a pre, a pre Mayan. For these guys are pre mine. Okay, well I guess we're inside the we're inside the belly of the earth. Yeah, it's quite it's quite rare to get air bells here also. You would uh, usually be totally submerged in the cave. But this is this exactly like this underwater too. I can see why you spent the last couple of decades exploring these unbelievable caves. It's like being in cathedrals, they're unbelievable. Trees are, are drinking this, you know? Yeah, you see no. the connection, you see the proper connection between outside and inside. Yeah. Oh, 
thank you so much for taking us down again, honestly. Oh, it's, it's our, our pleasure, man. The most yeah. amazing experience. It's great to show it to people mm. that uh, appreciate it. We buzzing off of you guys buzzing. So from the cenotes to a food given sacred status by the Mayans, so highly regarded it earned the name food of the gods. Consumed as a drink on special occasions, in spiritual rituals and even the seeds were used as a form of currency. Cacao has long been treasured by the Mayan people and people of Mexico for its healing and powerful benefits. It is thought to have possessed such powerful skills that it's able to help the dead transition into the afterlife and heal illnesses. Chocolate factories are common in all regions of Mexico and obviously chocolate is a key ingredient in so many recipes. So I travel to Oti to taste some traditional Mayan cacao. Buenas tardes. Hola. Cuero recomendas? Um, el Moonlight is muy rico. Es lavanda con menta. Muy rico. Okay, Moonlight, por of favor. Course. Okay. Okay? Gracias. De nada. So, cacao. Part of the magic of cacao is that it's got some huge benefits like uh, body-wise. It's got lots of magnesium, calcium, fiber, and it's a huge plant medicine to the body, but also to the spirit. So in our culture, in our ancestors, they used to drink it as a, as a drink to the heart. So it's a drink to feel joy. The medicine of cacao, it's joy. It's strongly connected to the heart center. So that's part of our intention too in Oti, to create a space and people can come and have a drink and perhaps leave the space heart first. Mmm. Muy rico. Gracias. Gracias. In the UK, we have sandwiches, and a typical filling is ham, cheese, or tuna mayo. But in Mexico, they have tortas. They are everywhere. Each region, each cook, each chef, and each family has a different style and way of serving their tortas. But one thing they all have in common is that they're fully loaded with Mexican deliciousness. And I had to get my hands on one. Gracias. De nada. Beautiful. How the hell I'm gonna eat this, I do not know. This is ginormous, it's juicy, there's sauces, there's everything in this, everything but the kitchen sink, but that's how a sandwich should be. This is a Mexican torta. Mm. Tulum is home to the Salazar family. Originally from Guadalajara, they opened their food store, Tapatia, and are serving some beautiful fresh Mexican dishes and serve a unique torta that I needed to learn how to make. Torta Algada from Guadalajara is a drowned torta. Yeah, that's right. They pour lashings of luxurious tomato salsa over the top of the sandwich. We have the actual bread from Guadalajara. We yes. have it shipped regularly um, here to, to our place. So yes. in general, all of the food, we have people, even um, uh, cab drivers, they don't, sometimes they don't even realize yeah, no, it's, it's, yes, it's vegan uh -huh. until he has to tell them. Because they're siempre, like, what siempre. kind of meat is it? Is it pork? Is it beef? And he's like, no, it's vegan. It says everywhere. That's incredible. So Eduardo, can you show me how to make a Guadalajara torta? Claro que si. Smells amazing, this bread. It's so crunchy and crisp as well. So I guess that's perfect for when you throw a load of sauce on top of it. It's so crunchy. Yes. It's amazing. After it comes out of the oven, slices of the bread in half, but yeah. not all the way. Yeah. Refried pinto beans are spread all over the freshly baked bread. Después ponemos eh, las carnitas de seitan. Ponemos aquí en el plato. Fresh onion. Yes, fresh onion. Nice. Y tiene que eh, morir un poquito en, en agua. This takes away some of the oniony harshness and is a Mexican technique called to die in the water. That's a lot of onion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then to finish, the Mexican tomato salsa is just poured simply all over the sandwich. Who thought of doing this? This is so, yeah. <laughs> this is wild, but it makes so much sense because the crunchy bread. Uh -huh, exactly, that's why it has to be that. Yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> Y wow. se lo ponemos así poquito arriba. Wow. Y... Oh, this is the hot sauce. Esta es la salsa very spicy de like chile this. de árbol. You can get this on. 
Esta, este chile va molido con, con especias y queda así súper picoso. Wow. Gracias. Look at that. Muchas gracias. I've got the napkins at the ready for this. I'm going to need claro them, right? Sí. sí, la tradición es comérsela con la mano. Okay. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. What I really like is how the bread is still crunchy, but it's just coated in this luxurious tomato sauce. This is amazing. Mmm. I don't think it's a good idea to have a beard when eating one of these Guadalajara tortas. <laughs> and you're gonna need lots of napkins. The bread is like a soft, crunchy pillow. It's been covered in the sauce so nicely, but it's still crunchy and, and springy and soft. Mmm. Sí, hay, hay una fusión de la salsa de jitomate que es un poco dulce con el, lo picoso del chile de árbol. Hace una mezcla de sabores y esa es la que sabe muy, muy rico. There's so many different layers of flavor. It's very meaty as well. Your seitan is amazing. This is incredible. Gracias. But quite crazy, I think. To pour loads of sauce over a sandwich is, is mind-blowing. It's very strange. It makes me want to go to Guadalajara because I reckon it'll be quite an exciting place to be. Sure, yes. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for having us. No problem. You're a mini vegan cook. Wow. What's your favorite thing to cook? Ice cream. Ice cream's your favorite, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you like torta? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's big though, right? <laughs> it's yeah. big. Mmm. Mmm. Yo estoy muy orgullosa de ser mexicana porque se me hace que es una cultura demasiado profunda, tiene muchas raíces, el amor por la comida es impresionante y los sabores. Y aparte está lleno de amor y la gente tan alegre, la, sí. la comida, algo de nosotros, poderlo compartir. Siento que esa es la magia de México, su gente, sus colores y sus sabores. Sí. Así. Perfecto. <risa> Bye. Sí. So I wanted to have a go at making my own torta inspired by my travels around Mexico for my lovely Airbnb host Don Oscar and Doña Flor. And there's no better place to get my ingredients from than the famous Benito Juarez market in Oaxaca. Look at these chilies. Here's my shopping list for my torta. So hopefully we can get everything here. Oregano? Oregano? No, no oregano. Limes, spring onions, tomatoes, jalapeno, red onion, avocado. Cilantro? Si. Si, jalapeno. Jalapino. <laughs> Saboya verde. Verde. Sí, perfecto. Oh, what's garlic in español? Yeah. Ah, up there. Sí. Ajo. 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 Garlic. Garlic is ajo in español. <laughs> Gracias. Chile? Oh, there's those nice tomatoes. Wow, it's feel amazing. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Disculpa, seis uh, en español, tomate? Tomate criollo. Tomato criollo. Ok, <laughs> seis. <laughs> Gracias. Ok, that's everything I need. Fresh. Hopefully that is. <laughs> Try before you buy. What's 200 grams in Spanish? <laughs> Perfect. Oh, gracias. Muy elegante. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hola. Anchoti? Ah. Achiote. Sí. Achiote. Ok, gracias. Not from me, doggo. Not from me. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna get eaten by a dog. Don Oscar, what have you got for us? <laughs> Is that? <laughs> oh no, mezcal. Oh my gosh. 
spicy and chili, okay. not, not too hot. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Salt, orange, this. Okay. <laughs> okay. You gonna have one with us? No. I no. Mhm. Mhm. Hmm. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very strong, but very good. Oscar, am I uh, Mexican now? Right. After this. Wonderful. See? 100% okay. Mexican. I have your, your, uh, your birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Mucho gracias. No. <laughs> gracias. Okay, fire's going. Thanks to Oscar and his lovely wife because me and Tom are absolutely useless at getting the fire going. Anyway. I'm going to show you uh, a torta that I'm going to make inspired by the travels, by just Mexico. I fall in love with this country and I hope that my torta uh, does my love for the country justice. So I'm going to be using mushrooms and I'm going to be marinating them in a beautiful marinade. But first, I'm actually going to make the bread myself because I couldn't get any bread as good as Eduardo's in Tulum. So last night, I actually mixed together my bread dough and I let it sort of uh, rise slowly in the fridge overnight and that flavour of the yeast and the flour is just going to intensify and it's going to add a little almost sourdough-esque taste because it's been fermented for too long in the fridge basically. All I did was mix together some flour, some salt, some good quality olive oil, some yeast and some water. I kneaded it lightly um, and I made sure it's really nice and wet because that's how we know we're going to get a really light fluffy dough. Put it in your fridge in a couple of bowls overnight and then once it's risen for at least 12 hours. You can get it out of the fridge, let it warm up to room temperature, and then we're gonna shape it into some baguettes. So to shape the dough into baguettes, I've got uh, just some a grease baking dish and some greaseproof paper. Lightly flour the greaseproof paper and turn out the dough onto it, and then use the greaseproof paper just to mold it into a baguette shape. And then I'll get it onto my baking dish. Hopefully it doesn't stick. Ah, voila. Perfecto. So now I'm just going to let this dough rise a little for about 10 to 15 minutes before getting it into my preheated oven for it to rise and go crispy. And when it's lightly brown on top, I'll take it out. So my bread is rising now. I'm going to make this beautiful marinade. For the mushrooms, I'm going to be using some achoate, which is a ingredient that I discovered on my travels around Mexico. Mix a couple of cubes of the achoate with some water until it's a smooth paste. Then get it into a big mixing bowl with some oregano, some chili powder, some coriander, some spring onion, and some lime. Plus, I'm gonna add some roasted garlic cloves. Guys, you gotta forgive me for my terrible knife skills. I miss my knives from at home so much. You just gotta make do when you're staying in different places. Guys, this is your call to get set up properly in the kitchen. Now, all chefs need a good set of knives. There are pride and joy. Having sharp knives and good quality knives makes you more efficient, safer, and just better in the kitchen. Now, I've been using Dal Strong knives for the last few years. You would have seen me use them in all my more recent videos, and I've fallen in love with them. They are actually the best knives I've ever used. So I'm so happy that they're sponsoring today's video. Their collection is so big, there's literally a kitchen knife for everyone. Their knives are a thing of beauty. The attention to detail that's gone into making the handles, for example, and the blade itself, they're just beautiful to look at as well. They're streamlined, they're comfortable to use. I can't recommend these knives enough, I promise you. Guys, if you want some Dalstrong knives in your kitchen, then click the link below this video. In the description box, you'll be able to go and search through their catalog of amazing knives. They also do things like pots and pans and chopping boards. Their collection is incredible and it's such good quality. I cannot recommend them enough. So thank you so much to Dalstrong for sponsoring the video. I look forward to continue using your epic knives and pots. Guys, don't forget, click the link below this video if you want some of your own. Thank you, let's get back to the video. Just roasted some garlic over the flame. I'm gonna chop this in now, just a few cloves. That little smoky flavor is gonna add something different. So just a little bit of salt and some olive oil, then give it a good old mix up. Let's get some lime juice in there, then mix the mushrooms into it. Right, let's get these coated, every little crevice covered in that marinade. And you can leave this for a day, ideally two hours. 
that red is amazing. And you know what, these are going on the fire there, on the grill. I'm just gonna get super char grilled, crispy, smoky, meaty. Before we get those lovely mushrooms cooking on the grill and the bread is done, I'm gonna make a lovely tomato salsa to actually garnish my torta with. So all I'm gonna do is add some juicy Mexican tomatoes into a blender with some garlic, some cilantro, a little bit of spring onion, some olive oil, some salt and oregano, plus a splash of lime. Blitz until it's smooth. Oh, that smells good. The sun here just makes the best ever tomatoes. I'll check that for seasoning just before serving. And you can add some chili to it for a spice, but I'm actually gonna be serving mine with some of my homemade chili de arbol sauce. So it's gonna be spicy as a mother trucker. What a Mexican treat we have here. A beautiful sunset, the red's nearly done, and it's time to cook the mushrooms. Real super hot, so I'm just gonna get them on. Woo Sizzle, that's what we need. I wanna get these charred, to be honest with you. Lovely bit of color. I want these to be meaty. Mm-mm, muy rico. Fuego. Yeah, boy. Who says vegan food is boring? Look at this. We're grilling, baby. Carnitas. Yeah, boy. Beautiful. Bread. Rustica. Look at these flipping buttons. Oh, they are juicy and they are charred. Look, at, come and have a look at that. They are dripping with juices. Unbelievable. And I'm actually quite proud of this bread because if you would have seen the effort that we had to put in to find levendura di pan yesterday, AKA yeast, it was crazy. We went to about 17 different stores, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I'm gonna carve this open now. Yes, that's crunchy. Oh, did you see that crust? Look how light that is. Oh my God. Get some refried beans in there, a little bit of the tomato salsa that I made, some avocado, and then the beautiful mushrooms. Fill it up, basically. Let's get some of these mushrooms on. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> this is epic. Get these mushrooms on top. Cram as many as you can get in there. It's literally, it looks, and it's gonna taste like meat. I just know it. Bit of limo. Onion. Tu come? Si? Si? Torta. Torta, que rico. Sin carne. Sin carne, claro. Oh. Uno momento. Final thin finish in Guadalajara, they put a salsa on top of the torta, see? So I'm gonna do that. So, I'm gonna sh close. And salsa. Like the torta ahogada. Si. Chile de árbol. Sí. Now we taste. Oh no. Oh, it's mm. very messy. <laughs> Good? Mm. Muy rico? Muy rico. Yeah. <laughs> Mmm, how do you say not bad in Spanish? No está mal. No está mal, sí. No está mal. No está mal de comer, eh? Mmm. <laughs> Thank you for letting us stay here. Que lejos estoy del suelo donde nací. Estoy del suelo donde nací. 
The next episode is the final chapter in the Moy Rico series, and we learn how to make one of the most famous Mexican dishes, tamales. We also get a secret insight in how to make one of Mexico's finest exports. Stay tuned. Torta, ag Torta agada. Torta ahogada. <laughs> I can't say. Torta ahogada. Torta ahogada from Guadalajara is a drowned torta. Torta ahogada. <laughs> torta. Torta ahogada from Guadalajara is a drowned torta. <laughs>